Shawshank Redemption scene of going through the pipe, there the, before he does that, there are, in the soundtrack in your music there are what sounds like thunder sounds. Now those you I don't think so because there was thunder in the scene. I, I know there was well, thunder there were as low he's kind of sounds. Yeah, I'd in have there. to. I'd, I'd have to. I'll play it <laughs> to listen to it. Again. How's that? Yeah, that's me. Okay, and what is that? What would that be? I don't remember. Um, I mean. I mean, this is all kind of prepared guitar and sample. Yeah, that's probably got to be uh, Mike Fisher, this amazing percussionist on a uh, on a, 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 a bass boom that he's really controlled on a, that's being played off of a just a, a cat, you know, one of those uh, drum pads. Yeah. We used to call this a piano braid. This is me playing something and detuning it. Piano break. Well, it's it's some kind of you know wh whatever I'm doing, and then yeah. and it'll come in with an octave on it. So suddenly it just kind of braids with itself because it, it just. I mean, I did a lot of that of of, of of sampling phrase, and then trying it in fifths or in octaves just to see what kind of inner patterns would occur just by you know acci accident. But this would be more on rudimentary. Oh yeah, like a Kai, sam a Kai, a Kai samplers, samplers and things and stuff like that. Like that right? For they sure. would have artifacts that actually would be, would be. That's right. Like RF. If you if you had a TV in the room and you pl played something way low, you just hear this squeal that had like come down from the ether into the range because the sample was so low. Right. You know? um, so that's the sample, kind of played more at pitch. So we used to call that a piano braid. I don't know why. Yeah, most of these synthesizers, most of these ambient sounds are played live um, okay. by players. Okay. Oh, that's right. Then I go back to the phrase at the, at the beginning. Beautiful. The old minor second rub. Mm. Oh, but then it's going it's gonna go to major. That's kind of what it is, I yeah. think. Because there's your major chord, right? Yeah. Okay, so so there. This is what really struck me when I first heard this, because I said, "Who wrote that? That is amazing." <laughs> because harmonically, I'm hearing that, and I hear the D flat major. It's, it has this beautiful, rich sound, and then that E six nine, and then it goes to D sus four, and it's like that's like a jazz player would do that or something. But it's not a jazz vocabulary, and. Right there at the end, you went to the D, you have the D sus, but you have that major seventh, the C sharp on the top of that. Your vocabulary is unlike anyone else hmm. in that way, kind of the way that you hear harmony or you put those harmonies together. Right. Yeah. I mean, that w unintended, just kind of this is this is where my ears went, probably more than like I know just what to do is like you know messing around and messing around and, and that just sounds good to you. Right? That's it. That's right. And then you think, okay, I have to. The, this phrase, want, the phrase wants to expire, and it, it'll expire by going you know a one two three four to a one two three, and then yeah. kind of a hold, and then it'll kind of pause and resume. So there's there's a whole sense of start stop. I think that. It, you, you kind of have to get into with in film music, which is it can't just muscle forward all the time. Right. So how does it g gain momentum, and then how does the momentum relax, and then how does it how does it restart? I always thought of this scene be when he comes out of the pipe. It's like a, he has this rebirth, essentially. Yeah. Uh, and my, I want to continue to play this because the way that you change this whole theme is is really brilliant to me. And you have the voiceover over this Morgan Freeman. And some really loud thunder, as I recall. Yeah, <laughs> yeah some really loud thunder. <laughs> so there's a kind of an E-sharp-ish thing. Yes. 
but I think that's John Clark, an oboist on an English horn doing a you know, overblowing. Yeah. Right, so the mood is starting yeah. to lift, right? Now, would you be conducting, would, did you conduct yeah. this? Yeah, okay. E natural there that comes in is why would you put that in there? That's because so it's so it's so royal, right? I mean, it's so not just one thing, right? right. Yes, there's glory in the major, <laughs> but there's still is something that is so wrong with everything, right. or something that you think, all right, here's just an E next to it, so it's a kind of a, a minor major thing, yes. right? kind of at once. You let you. I noticed that that you love to put minors and majors together. Yeah. You like to the put the complexity of what something, you know. And and you do you you put you had that suspended chord with the major seven or you'll do things with majors with the flat six yeah. together. All those <laughs> all those beautiful Rubs. all those distances, yeah. those haunting tones or yeah. surprise notes. Right. Or just, just a sense of um complex drama, maybe. Kind of yeah. trying to acknowledge that the drama is not one thing but many things. As this goes on, though, so, so then you get, you come to the brass, which which plays this more glorious, right? More just, glorious, just, just, just by virtue of a brassy sound. There's, yeah, there's something masculine and uplifted by default, or something. And then the string line, though, that comes in now is kind of a new thing that you hear. You mean the yes, dum? yes, and then and that's that, just trying to get more kind of okay, guys. We're we're moving. This is gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Yes, and that's. Chords, I think, playing that. Yeah. And finally coalescing, yes. you know. Like I've done it. <laughs> I mean, then the best. change there and you bring in you, you kind of repeat the it goes to b the d then back to to uh to b with i mean you eventually end up on the f sharp suspended f sharp major it's so glorious and you add the a major in there yeah and that's a fresh chord there, there are moments when i'm focused and this stuff can just happen okay. sometimes it can be really quick yeah um, I, I i almost want to say when i got there yeah i kind of just kept going. I, I, yeah. I in, in all fairness, I don't remember, but I don't think I struggled uh, I, I com compositionally with, with that area. It was a funny story. You know, if you listen to this area of the movie where it goes, that, that, um, yeah. it doesn't happen in the movie because Frank Terrabon came he out. He cut and it said, out, right? He said, no, no movie's going to go, no, no, no movie of mine is going to go, that, that, um, <laughs> something like that. So it was like, it just ended on a bomb. It just hit, hit a downbeat. I remember that. Yeah, I thought it was. Personally, a wrong choice that he was he was nervous that I, we were overselling it, I think was would have been his reasoning behind it. Um, but I thought it was musically so earned by that point. But clearly he didn't. The rebirth thing, musically, how you changed there, how you yeah. brought in the A major. And, and cleansed then by the rain and yes. all that, looking to the sky and all that. Yeah. And then, you know, if you follow it, one of the, 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 the with this. This follow was a big moment in my creative life, which is how do you put this extroverted moment next to this really introverted okay, thing? Okay, what, what is playing here? Is that a harp that's playing? It's probably a, a sampled harp. Oh, but I think it was in a part of uh, a pianist, a, a, a keyboard player who was on the date who played along with it. I didn't know he would and I really liked it. It was one of those, wow, that sounds good. And I don't remember having made that instruction. Um, but then you have those low booms next to this very tinkling kind of, you know, 
interior, uh, psychologically interior thing.